7153. It's time for the game that takes you back in time. Let's go back. And now, here's the host of Let's Go Back, Scott Sternberg. Hi there. And hello to you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Let's Go Back. Uh, we're going to test your trivia knowledge right now. And we're going to test the trivia knowledge of these three people right over here. Our contestants for the day, we have Emily, Lauren, and Grant. How you feel? Good. Great. Strong. Yes. Smart. Well. <laughs> Emily, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Emily Davis. I'm a fashion show producer. I produce shows all over town for different charity events, and I have a five and a half year old daughter who I'm madly in love with. Well, I don't blame you. Now, also, I found out here that uh, you are a former Phi Beta Kappa. Uh huh. Doesn't what? even buy you a co cup of coffee. Really? <laughs> really? Nothing at all? Nope. It didn't help but it's, you? It was nice. It's nice. Nice little key, too. Well, hopefully it'll help you a little bit today on the, uh, on the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Good luck to you. Maybe so. Thanks. Lauren. Yes. What's I'm, happening? Well, I'm Lauren Lester, and I make radio commercials. And I'm a native of Los Angeles, and my wife and I are expecting our first child in September. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping for a boy or a girl? And either one. Makes no difference. As long as it's one or the other, it's fine. That's right. <laughs> That's good. All right. How about nostalgia? What makes you good at it? Well, I love the late 50s and the early 60s because it just makes me laugh. Everything, every time I see the, the styles and the architecture and things like that from that period, it just makes me laugh. But there, it's happening now. The 50s and 60s I know. and everything is happening I know. It's now. great. It's very expensive, too, to find that stuff. <laughs> well, maybe make some money and buy some of that stuff. Sounds great. All right. Good luck today. Grant, what's happening with you? I'm Grant Gottschall. I'm a limo driver here in the Los Angeles area, and I enjoy uh, gardening and uh, going to the gym, playing golf, stuff like that. Yeah, do you cook or do you uh, Actually, do I do, yeah. I, do I cook with the food that I grow and, and the herbs that I, I grow as well. What's your specialty? Uh, wow, uh, braised lamb shanks. Braised lamb shanks. Pretty good, yeah. I had that yeah. for breakfast today, braised <laughs> lamb shanks. <laughs> I, actually, I actually grow the lamb in the... No. All right, well, good luck to you today. Thanks Thank you. for being here. Let's take a look now at the categories for round number one. And we start right up at the top with heartthrobs, classic TV lines, musical geography, hey, food for thought, and blue movies. Blue movies. Going to give you 10 points now for each correct answer. Got to take the 10 away if you're incorrect. Also hidden behind one of the decades is our fabulous time capsule nostalgia knick-knack. <laughs> Charlie O, what is hidden in this round? Hey, it's a swell Bugs Bunny ice cream truck in the time capsule. This cool white truck with red stripes has Bugs driving in style. There's a bell on the truck and a sign which says, delicious ice cream. This What's Up Doc truck also is motorized by friction and can be used by kids and adults alike. Have an ice cream on Bugs. Scott? Okay, that Bugs Bunny ice cream truck, something that I would like to have, and maybe one of these people will get if they get the time capsule question correct. Uh, we drew some numbers before the show, and Emily, you won. Okay, so you're in control. Pick a decade, a category. Let's go back. I want to find the ice cream truck. Okay. Where could it be? Um, let's go back to the 60s for blue movies. What does that mean, blue movies? I don't know. We'll find out. In Blue Hawaii, Elvis Presley's mom was played by this actress, known to TV audiences as Jessica Fletcher. Emily. Angela Lansbury. Correct you are. From Murder, She Wrote. On the board, Emily, go again. Let's go back to the 60s for musical geography. It's the city where you'd find the house of the rising sun. Grant. New Orleans. Yes. Can you sing a little of that, by the way? There is a house in New Orleans. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only worth 10 points, however, Grant. <laughs> no brownie Pick points again. for that. Okay. okay, let's go back to the 80s with musical geography. What city was the starship singing about when they sang, We Built This City on Rock and Roll? Lauren. Uh, San Francisco. Yes, yeah, San Francisco. You squeeze that in your heart, you're going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren is on the board. Everybody's on the board. 10, 10, 10. Lauren, in control. Go again. Let's go back to the 50s with blue movies. Okay, and it's the <laughs> time capsule. <laughs> right off the bat, you wanted that Bugs Bunny truck. I can put this down truck. now. You can put that down now. <laughs> That's right, you got a chance now to win the Bugs Bunny ice cream truck. Grant and Emily got to sit this one out. We're going to double it and make it 20 points if you get a correct answer. We're not going to take the 20 away, however, so enjoy this question. Okay. okay. 50s blue movies. 
The Moon is Blue starred this actor the same year he won an Oscar for Stalag 17. Uh, William Holden? William Holden is what I have on the card. Oh. You are absolutely <laughs> correct. Good for you. Great. 20 points for you, Lauren, and the Bugs Bunny ice cream truck great. is yours. Great. All right, feel good? Yes, I do. Thanks. Well, great. <laughs> All right, continue on. All right, let's go back to the 70s with Blue Movies. Blue Collar starred this comedian in a dramatic role, though better known team with Gene Wilder. Lauren again. Richard Fryer. Yes, go again. Let's go back to the 80s with Blue Movies. This 1983 film starred Roy Scheider and Daniel Stern as pilots of an LAPD surveillance helicopter by the same name, Grant. Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder is right. Ten points more for you, Grant. We're going to take a short break here. Lauren in the lead with 40 points. We'll be back with more of round number one right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're uh, in the middle of a good game here. We're still uh, looking for Emily's Lost Five Beta Kappa Key. <laughs> and, uh, and Lauren has the Bugs Bunny ice cream truck, and For also Lauren has the lead. Okay, shall we continue on? Grant, you had the last correct answer. Pick. Let's go back to the 70s with musical geography. Elton John wrote this song for Billie Jean King's tennis team. <laughs> Nobody knows. Audience, do you know? Okay. <laughs> the answer is Philadelphia Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I should have had it. Oh, I should have had it. All right, still in control. Grant, pick again. Well, let's go back to the 50s with musical geography again. The first city to top the rock charts was where they got some crazy little women. Emily. Kansas City. Kansas City, right. Anybody know who sang it? Who recorded that very first Kansas City? Chuck Berry. No, Chuck Berry did not. He did have a cover, though. It was Wilbert Harrison. Oh, we wouldn't have, I wouldn't come up with that. Well, you know. Yeah. All right, go ahead, okay, Emily. Okay, well, let's go back to the 60s for Food for Thought. In 1968, this fast food sandwich was introduced with two all-beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun, Grant. Big Mac. Big Mac. Good, Grant. Ten more points for you. I knew you would get the food question. Yeah. <laughs> I got those, too, yes. Uh, let's go back to the 80s, uh, please, with Food for Thought. Staying with food. Yes. A 1982 bestseller proclaimed, real men don't eat this. Emily. Quiche. Yeah, quiche is right. You eat quiche, Lauren? I'm afraid I do. <laughs> uh, you told that to your wife? Yes, but I speak with a low voice when I, I do see. <laughs> Emily, help us here continue. Okay, well, let's try some more food. 50s food for thought. We were introduced to a new taste treat when this, the first brand of TV dinners, hit the market. Emily again. Swanson? Yeah, Swanson. Oh, right. Ten more points for you, Emily. Well, now I like tied food. for the lead with Let's Lauren. Let's go back to the 70s for food, for thought. In 1971, Graham Kerr was better known to TV audiences as this. Grant. The Galloping Gourmet? Yeah, he was the Galloping Gourmet. How did you know that? Uh, you, food person, you. Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll pick another decade and category. Okay, let's go back to the 80s uh, with heartthrobs. This British rock star found even greater success in the 80s when he broke away from his group Wham! Grant. George Michael. Yes, George Michael. His partner was? Oh, that one guy. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody know? Don't know. Audience, do you know who it was? And a big hearty Andrew Ridgely would be coming out of there. Go ahead, Grant. You got the lead. 70s with heartthrobs. This Romeo from New Jersey was first introduced to TV audiences as Vinnie Barbarino. Grant. John Travolta. Yes. Go again. 60s with heartthrobs. Before Guy Williams got lost in space, he made his mark as this caped ladies' man, Emily. Oh, um, oh, I had it. Bat, uh, not Batman, darn. <laughs> Time's up. Lauren. Zorro. Zorro. The mark with the Z was Zorro. Okay, go again, Lauren. Uh, let's go back to the 50s for classic TV lines. Actor John Hamilton portrayed this editor-in-chief who was famous for exclaiming, Great Caesar's ghost. Emily? Perry White. Perry White. And his job was his the editor-in-chief of which? The Daily newspaper? Planet. Correct, you are. But Go I again. Get ten more points. Okay, let's try. <laughs> no, Emily. Let's try the '60s classic TV lines. Colonel Hogan found life easy in Stalag 13 thanks to this inept sergeant who was quick to say, "I know nothing." Emily. Sergeant Clink. 
No, not Sergeant Clink. Grant. Sergeant Schultz. Sergeant Schultz. And how did he actually say it with that accent? I know nothing. <laughs> I think he's done very well. All right, 10 more points for you, Grant. In the lead with 70, pick again. Ah, oh, the 80s with classic TV lines, please. This character is the taxi mechanic, famous for expressing his appreciation by saying, thank you very much. Grant. Latka Gravis. Yes, indeed. Did I do that very well? Was it thank you very much? Yes, yes, very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ten more points for you, Grant. You have 80 and in the lead, and go again. The 70s again with classic TV lines. Okay. On Laugh-In, Artie Johnson would often peer out from behind a potted plant and mutter these two words. Lauren. Very interesting. Yeah, that's good. Very correct. <laughs> Ten more points for you, Lauren. And last question now, round number one. 50s heartthrobs. This teen actor became a teen idol in 1958 when he starred as Jeff Stone on the Donna Reed show. Emily. Paul Peterson. Paul Peterson is right. Good, Emily. Good, Good job. Let's take a look now at the scores. We are at the end of round number one. Lauren. Uh, second place, sorry, Lauren with 60. Grant, you are in the lead with 80. Emily with 40. We had a good game going. Everything will double in round number two. Don't go away. Let's go back on American Life TV. Okay, welcome back. We have a good game going here. Emily, still haven't found that Phi Beta Kappa key. Still looking. Lauren's got the Bugs Bunny truck. And Grant has the lead. And Grant, one question for you. You're a limo driver. Yes. Want to know who's the most famous guy you've ever driven? Oh, most or a lady. Or lady. Or lady. Well, most recently I, I was fortunate enough to drive uh, for the Academy Awards Billy Crystal, the MC. Oh, Billy Crystal. Yeah, that was... Nice guy? Very nice guy, Very yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. He was a little under the weather, so I had to keep a lot of uh, freshly squeezed OJ in the cooler for him. <laughs> <laughs> Something you do well, since you're a food guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, Emily. You have the, uh, the control here, but first, before we go ahead with the game, I'm going to tell you guys which is the categories now for round number two. And they happen to be, starting from the top, last names, film stuff, music notes, film at 11, and tunes. Tunes, 20 points now for each correct answer. We're going to take the 20 if you are not correct. Again, Emily. Remember, you have control, but before I let you start... Time capsule prize, hidden behind one of the decades, Charlie O'Donnell, what is it in this round? Here's something you've always wanted, Richard Nixon bubblegum cigars. <laughs> Celebrate the election results with this red, white, and blue box, sporting the description of your presidential favorites. Win with Vic bubblegum cigars in mint condition. But can you blow a bubble? Back to you, Scott. Okay, those Nixon bubblegum cigars are available in this round. Ready to go? Okay. Now, Emily, okay. you're in control. Pick a category, a decade, we'll go back. Okay, let's go back to the 60s for last names. Okay, and this happens to be the time capsule. <laughs> right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to double the points now. It's worth 40 to you. Lauren and Grant, you're going to have to take a sit on this one. All right, and you got a chance to get those bubblegum cigars from Nixon. What do you think? I was looking for those. Were you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready to go? 60s last names. Good luck. On the man from Uncle, this is the last name of Napoleon Solo's Russian partner, Ilya. Kuryakin. Is right. Yeah. <laughs> Ilya Kuryakin, right. 40 points more for you, actually ties you now for the lead, and the bubblegum cigars are coming your way. Still have control. Pick again. Okay, let's go back to the 50s for last names. This is the last name of Red Skelton's befuddled character, Clem. Emily? Kittlehopper. Kittlehopper is right. Know any other Red Skelton characters? Oh, man. Remember I, him? No, I really was too young for most of that oh, show. Oh, I see. You guys he wasn't remember? a heartthrob, you know. You guys remember those other characters? No. No? Where I do I go from here? <laughs> <laughs> Freddy the Freeloader, oh. uh, Heathcliff, Gertrude and Heathcliff, the Seagulls. Oh, yes. That's right. Okay. That sounds real familiar. Shall we go? Yes, yeah, so let's go back to the 70s for last names. This is the last name of Robert De Niro's crazed taxi driver. Grant. Bickle. Travis Bickle, correct. Go, Grant. Let's go back to the 80s with music notes. Rapture was the album. Deborah Harry, the lead singer, and this was the name of the group. Grant. Blondie. Correct. Go again. Well, let's go back to the 70s with music notes again, please. Her first solo album on the charts for 302 weeks featured It's Too Late. Grant. Carol King. Yes, Carol King. Tapestry. Do you have the album? No. 
I don't. I do. Well, Emily has it. <laughs> Look inside. The key is probably somewhere in the book. <laughs> All right, Grant, you got the lead with 140. Pick again. Oh, let's go back to the 60s with musical notes again, please. As far as we know, the singing nun was the only nun to hit the top 40 with this song. Emily? Dominique. Dominique. Can you sing a little of it? Dominique, Nique, Nique, la, la, la. Hey. I don't know this is good. I liked it. 20 more points for you. Go, Emily. Let's go back to the 80s for last names. This is the last name of the Ewing ranch hand turned half-brother on Dallas. My sister would know. Ooh. Time's up, audience. Anybody know? Krebs, right. Ray Krebs, played by Steve Keneally. Emily, go again. Let's go back to the 50s for music notes. Whose bullet went through Billy and broke the bartender's glass? Grant standing there going. <coughs> Emily? Liberty Valance? No. That's backwards. Lorna Grant, any guesses there? No? Stagger Lee. Stagger Lee. Right. Oh. Emily, still in control. Let's go back to the 60s for film at 11. In 1960, this boxer regained his heavyweight championship title by defeating Ingemar Johansson. <coughs> Time's up. Floyd Patterson. Mm. No boxing fans here. No. Go again, Emily. Let's go back to the 60s for film stuff. This campy Betty Davis classic tells the story of an ex-child star who terrorizes her crippled sister, Grant. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? Absolutely correct. Good for you, Grant. 20 more points. Go again. Let's go back to the 80s with film stuff. Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb starred as a punk rocker and his girlfriend in this biographical cult film of 1986, Grant. Sid and Nancy. Sid and Nancy, correct. <laughs> Sid and, and Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> Go again, Grant. Sounds better than Sid and Nancy. Uh, back to the 70s uh, with film stuff. This film's songs include Time Warp and Damn It, Janet. Grant. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. You ever go? Uh, once, yes. Sit yes. in the front row, you got all this stuff on? No. Say I the words? I sat somewhere in the middle and was just confused by the whole thing, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, I guess. All right, uh, pick again, Grant. Thanks. Uh, the 50s with film stuff. He played the gang leader who terrorized a small town in this 1954 film, The Wild One. Grant again. Marlon Brando. Yes. Another 20 points for you. Grant, you're in control. Let's go back to the 80s with film at 11. Jean-Claude Baby Doc Duvalier was ousted in 1988 from his palace in this country. Lauren. Haiti. Yes. Uh, let's go back to the 70s at film at 11. April 10th, 1970 was the end of an era as the Beatles broke up when this member quit. Grant. John. John, no. No, darn. Emily. Paul McCartney. Yes, it was Paul McCartney who did leave the Beatles. Okay. 20 points more for you, Emily. Go again. The 50s film at 11. In 1950, Congress passed a law requiring all members of this political party to register with the government. Lauren. The Communist Party. Yes, indeed. 20 more points for you, Lauren. Let's go back to the 70s with tunes. This 1972 animated cult classic received an X rating. Grant? Fritz the Cat. Fritz the Cat. Did you ever see it? The... Did you ever see it? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I saw it, but I didn't inhale. <laughs> I see. <laughs> All right, Grant. In control, sort of. Pick again. <laughs> Let's go back to the 80s with tunes. In Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Jessica's speaking voice was done by this star of Body Heat. Grant again. Kathleen Turner. Correct. Go again. Back to the 60s with tunes. That means time is up. I'm going to sneak in this question, 60s tunes. This animated feature of 1968 introduced us to the dreaded blue meanies. Grant. Yellow Submarine. Is right. Another 20 points for you. That's the end of the round. And let's take a look at the scores. Grant, 260. Lauren, 100. Emily, second place, 120. And we'll be back with the all-important decades round and find out who the winner is going to be right after this. Once again, more fun in your favorite decades on Let's Go Back. All right, it's time now to see who the winner is going to be. It's time for the final decades round. You guys ready? You played a good game? Ready. Feel ready? Yep. All right, let's take a look now. Grant, 260, which means you are in first place. You will need four correct answers for the win. Second place belongs to Emily. 
Five correct answers for you, Emily and Lauren. You'll need six, okay? Very simple. We need your answers in the form of decades, all right? First one to get there gets $500. Ready to go? Ready. Ready. Here's your first question. What decade did Ray Charles first sing Hit the Road, Jack? Lauren? 50s. No. Emily? 60s. Yes, 1961. In which decade did Jack Nicholson star in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Emily? 70s. Yes, 1975. In which decade was Anwar Sadat elected president of Egypt? Grant? 60s. No. Lauren? 70s. Yes, 1970. In which decade were film goers introduced to sound in Sense Around? Lauren? The 70s. Yes, 1974. In which decade did Rene Lacoste patent the steel frame tennis racket? Grant? 60s? Yes, 1963. In which decade did the Grammy for Best New Artist go to Tom Jones? Emily? 60s. Yes, 1965. In which decade was the first publishing of Playboy? Emily? 50s. Yes, 1955. One more for you, Emily, will do it. In which decade did Konica market the first autofocus camera? Emily? 60s. No. Grant? 70s. Yes, 1978. In which decade did Ferdinand Marcos flee to Hawaii? Grant? The 80s. Yes, 1986. One more now will do it for you. In which decade was the Trans-Alaskan oil pipeline completed? Emily? 70s. 1977 is right. Emily, you have one. Good job. $500 for Emily. You came all the way back. Very good and a very exciting decades round. How do you feel? Great. This huh? is great. Didn't I didn't get the ice cream truck, but I got I won the game. You won $500? I'll sell it to you for $500. <laughs> Lauren. Now I know your price. Lauren, you did well. Grant, did you have fun? Great time. Great. Thanks very much. And I'll see you all next time right here on Let's Go Back. I'm Scott Sternberg. Let's go back see you then. Bye-bye. Hey, look. Coming up next, 